You are listening to the Hello Sport Podcast. What's up, punters and dribblers? Welcome back to the Hello Sport Podcast, the home of unqualified opinion and unwavering bias. Coming to you uh, Tuesday morning, but recording Monday night, yeah, basking, fucking sunbaking, fully waxed pubic region, dicks and balls and assholes out sunbaking in the afterglow of a famous sixth World Cup victory. That's one day World Cup, punters and dribblers. We're the fucking greatest nation on planet Earth. We're coming to you late because we were busy at work today. I'm not going to tell you what it was about. We can't tell you what it was about. It's work we can't tell you about. But We can't tell you, but you might have seen a photo. You might have seen a photo of us on our Instagram that we didn't put up, but that someone else put up and collaborated with us. It was put up by a close personal friend. One of our best mates put it up and collabed with us. Now, we're not saying that has anything to do with the reason we weren't able to release the podcast today, but if you put two and two together and assume that maybe it was, I can't help what you think. Yeah, listen, I'm not going to be uh, I'm not going to be able to tell you what to think although sometimes I'm I'm able to do that. Mm. On this occasion, all I can say is we were hanging out today with our best close personal friend. Yep. Um, who is on our Instagram and who collaborated with us and who has 701,000 followers. Yeah, uh, give or and, take. And may or may not, but definitely did, win three World Cups. Uh, and also, three? Yeah. And Are also, you sure he won three? He said three today. I think he won two. He said he has three rings. That's what he said today. Can we check that? Don't. I don't know who we're talking about even. But He said to me, I've got three rings. Three? Because he was left out of the greatest World Cup, like the... Top 11 World Cup side of all time. Which is a joke. And he was like, the guy they replaced me with, Sanger Kara, who could play but never won a World Cup. Yeah, that's absurd. Can confirm it's three. There wow, you go. what years? 90 um, something, 2000, 2007. 99. So 03. 99, 2003, 2007. Wow, how many motherfuckers won Ricky, three? Ricky won three. Did Ricky win three yeah, as well? But and he, captain two. Captain two. Wow. But it wasn't guy, Ricky though. We're not. Yeah, but the, it, the guy we were with today as well, our a really close personal friend who collaborated with us he and asked for the photo. Yeah. <clears throat> he also captained the only side in like the last 50 years to win an away test series in uh, in India. He captained that whole series? Yeah, because a certain someone was missing. St- a punter? So he captained that. He captained at least Whoops. three. I think Didn't he, say his I think, name. We'll beep his, beep his name. Beep he captained three or four tests at least. Wow. Pretty sure, yeah. Anyway, beat that name. So he's got runs on the board. We're not going to tell you who it is. No, that's um, not, we're not. We're not about that. We life. don't kiss and tell. No, we don't. But if we're collabed, we can't help it. Yeah, yeah but that's, he collabed with us. We, we didn't do the collabing. We were happy, happily collabed, obviously, as if you wouldn't collab with, the mm. fucker, with one of your best mates. We didn't do it. All we're saying is that's why the podcast wasn't recorded this morning. So anyone who's trying to be like, oh, fuck you. Yeah. Weren't you fucking doing it? We're like, mate, because we were fucking belt sanding our cocks off, as you put so eloquently, Eddie. Busy hanging out with goats. That's what we're doing. Yeah, dude. Herding them. Yeah, just herding goats all day. Herding them, milking them, wrangling them. Now... About that afterglow sort of oh, stuff. Oh, yeah, that thing that's given me that golden brown. Tom and I don't know much. But what I do know is when there's an opportunity ripe for the picking. Mm. When now, fruit's ripe? Listen, cunt. I know when it's cherry season. I know when a fucking banana's gone too far. I want to know. I know when an abo is too hard to fucking buy. Like I know, or too soft to buy. Or Let's too not, soft. Uh, either side of that of that uh, coin is fucked with the abo. You know, I know when it's mandarin season. It is also cherry season. I know you know that, but like when you're talking about cherry ripe, it, it is cherry season. No, but I know it's cherry season. That's why I mentioned it because kids been eating cherries. So, got some in the fridge. Yep. I know it's cherry season. What I'm saying is that Tom and I know when things are ripe for the picking. And you can check the tapes. We're fruit pickers. Check the tapes. We pick fruit like it's going out of fashion, like it's going out of fashion, punters and dribblers. We said once momentum started to be gained that India of hadn't lost a match fame at home fame in front of their people fame playing the final in front of 130,000 screaming 
fucking Indians fame, we're in big, big trouble. Huge trouble. Monumental trouble. Insurmountable trouble. You don't want to go into the biggest game, the final game, the crescendo of the tournament without a loss because you know what's coming if you haven't had a loss. At home. At home. Big trouble. Loss is coming. There's a loss coming. There's a loss coming. There's a. It, it was just, you know what's happened, punters and jibblers? I'm starting to rack up winters. Yeah. A lot of you haven't seen it. You haven't seen enough. Shout out to my 40 and overs. I'm not 40 and over, but like you would have seen enough. Well, you, you knew. Get. You knew. These 20 and under boys don't get it. They don't. And girls, they don't get it. Tw- you're in your 20s, not enough winners. Sorry. You were like, India will win. Yeah. And you could be like, oh, you know, hindsight, I actually thought Australia was. No, no, no. Not, not deep down your plums. Did no. you put a bet on last night? 100 bucks at three to one? Because I did. Because I did. Kid gets it. Fruit picker. Picking fruit. Winter veteran. Yeah. Now, Tom. Fucking Wim Hof over here. Can I tell. Loves the cold. Yeah. (laughs) Hey. Hey. Big ice bath guys. Huge. Big ice bath guys. I can sit there. Two, three mins. And the rest. Listen, I'm not Ned Brock, but I'm not doing 20 minutes. I'm not a fucking sicko. Love Ned, but. Yeah, but I'm saying. He's insane. You know what I mean? That's the difference. Love him, but, you know, you know what I'm saying. The fact that we have gone over to the subcontinent, Tom, gone into, we've gone behind enemy lines, we've gone in there, and we've picked ripe fruit. Now, Owen Wilson was actually trying to extract someone, but imagine that we were going back to, like, extract fruit. So take Owen Wilson, who was taking uh, reconnaissance photos over an Eastern European, uh, I believe, country that was Kosovo? not named that was not named maybe it was one of steph's places he sees some things that shouldn't be seen i believe co- covering up some sort of genocide yeah some human rights sort of stuff bosnia. anyway they bosnia bosnia those bosnians he they get out the air uh, the anti-aircraft missiles and they take on some fucking fire and they're got to bail out now owen then has to get out alive. It's like that, except our Australian team went in behind enemy lines to the most powerful cricket nation on the planet with over a billion people. Uh, we've got 24 million. I don't know what the percentages are, but we've got fuck all in comparison. Yeah, They've got all the money, all the talent, all the people, and they were playing in their own backyard on Dr. Pitchers. Also, pitches. just like, yeah, Dr. Pitchers. Like, oh, we'll play with the pitchers old. Oh, you know, we're just going to play with the pitchers been used like multiple times in this tournament. We're going to try and fuck you in the ass because we can. Yep. And then, you know what we did? We said, go on, do it. Yep. Put it in. And then I'm going to enjoy it. I'm going to wig you out. Now I'm going to win. Exactly. And we went over there. And what did we pick, punters and dribblers? What did we pick? We picked World Cup fruit. And do you know who knows who what World Cup fruit is and when it's ripe for the picking? Uh, the cunts that have won six now. That's who. Do you reckon West Indies get it? They did when they won the first two. Not anymore. You reckon England get it? No. When they cheated? When they cheated no. against New Zealand? They don't get it. They, you know what England did? They went in last year, last time around, in their own backyard and tried to sell us rotten fruit. In fact, they didn't... For, they didn't make us. They forced us, yep. basically, at gunpoint. Well, it was basically like uh, like we were baby birds and they put their beaks in our mouth and vomited down there. We didn't want to have it. No, we didn't want it. We were like we were, we were baby birds going, where's the ripe stuff, mum? Where's the ripe stuff, mum? <laughs> didn't realise mum's a sicko. <laughs> mum's a sick, twisted puppy, okay? Mum's got that disease Birdie. where she fucking makes you sick so she can make you better. Yeah. Makes you sick, makes you better. There's a word for it. Munchausen's by Munchausen's proxy. Munchausen's by proxy. <laughs> mum had Munchausen's last time. <laughs> Okay, and that's why England won. But if they weren't munchising in, you know, incentivized, as in, again, trying to make us sick so they can make us better. You following right now? Are you following? Are you fucking following? Take that one out, because that was munchising's. <laughs> and let's look at ripe, ripe fruit picked. <laughs> no one picks like us. No, 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 we pick it. We pick it. Now, so much to say, so much, you know, to do. So much to fucking, you know, feel, to say and do. Um, Firstly, I think credit to us for not, you know, people try and say that like the live streams out, like we we sort of, you know, uh, don't do a live stream, you'll jinx them. I firstly would like to say that usually when we're doing these, we're fucking on on the underdog and that's, you know, never taken into account. But also that we were up watching it, periods of it, and we don't lose when that happens. So basically we got the boys home. Listen, 
We had a big day today, so we were not in a position to do a live stream. No, that's the only reason. Otherwise, we would have done it. Listen, we work too hard, dick to the belt sander sort of stuff. Yeah. And we, we, we're too professional, basically. Way too professional to do a live stream. Might have had also something to do with the fact that I had a huge weekend at a wedding. But that's by the by. Mm. Not important. What's important that is that Pat Cummins, old blue eyes. Oh, old blue eyes. Has now gone from... Uh, Boy to a man. Champion to a legend. Yes, all those things. But he's also gone from the Blue Mountains, Tom, to captain of the world. Do you know what's funny is, and I don't know if this has been proven, but I know I've like, it's been in some sort of like, uh, not medical journals, what they'd be called, nature uh, journals. You know what, you know, you know it'd be a good book name for him? From Blue to Gold. Well, what I was going to say, Eddie, was that I actually have it on good authority the mountain's only blue when he's there and it's radiating from his eyes if you look at them now they're not fucking blue no nah, they're grey they, they're just like normal they're just the mountains no, they're grey they're mountains you're like oh there's, there's grey mountains and then that's how you know when he's up there you go oh fuck Pat's back in town yep. those things are blue as fuck up there exactly the podcast this week is always brought to you by our fucking best friends at Ned's they are the, the number one betting platform on planet earth if you like to have a punt and not everyone does but if you do Ned's is where we do it and there is a multitude of reasons why one there's the private group where we can all go in there and share our bets and have a laugh and a giggle and shoot the shit. The other reason is the profiles, which is a new thing where you can basically go and see what I've been betting on, what Eddie's been betting on, Sebo's been betting on, Tobler, but that's a joke. Like, you don't actually want to see what Tobler's been betting on. It's just a... There's, there's an elevated element of interactivity within the betting platform, again, if you're into it, punters and dribblers, that is best in class. Best in class, an elevated level of interactivity. Yep. I mean, if that doesn't want to make you join Ned's, what will? Ned's are best in class. They've upped their app game. It's now delicious. It's not nutritious, but it may as well be. Phenomenal product. I'm, I, in my opinion, think it's best in class without a shadow of a doubt. Their markets are all late. You've got the profiles. You've got the about even group as well. You can join with the code dribbler. Things I've already said. But... I'm reiterating because they're important. Mm. Okay? Ned's is best. We're the best. Are you the best? Because if you're the best, join Ned's. Imagine what you could be buying instead. For free and confidential support, call the number on screen or visit the website. So listen, Eddie, we've won another World Cup. Now, yes, we have. We, we get out there. We're, we're fielding first. We're bowling no, 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 first. No, 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 no. Let's yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's just let's just go back one step. If, you if want you to step mind. it back? Yes, I do. Where are we stepping back to? To this point. Pat Cummins of bluest eyes in the world and huge sack fame. What about his penis? Long and thick. Goes out there <laughs> in front of 100, 130,000 screaming Indians. Screaming souls. Screaming souls. And in front of big, fat, BCI piglets, okay? And Wait I only point. say that with all due respect hey, because they're dripping in cash. Listen, full respect to the BCI piglets. But they're big and fat and they're huge pigs. Or the BCCI? Whatever. You know what I'm saying? The Indian Cricket Board of Control, whatever. Now, he's gone out there into that sort of environment and <laughs> won the toss and said, you know what, bruh? We're going to chase, if you don't mind. Mm. Mm. Uh, you seen Randy in fucking South Park when his balls are in a fucking wheelbarrow? Yeah. That's PC, baby. Yeah. Make that meme, Tobler. Um, hey, India, are you going to doctor your pitches, then try and scare us into batting first? How about we don't? How about we say, you know what, we'll chase you fucking losers. Put the pressure back on you because you know what? You haven't lost a game all fucking series. You're at home in front of fucking 130,000 souls in the final so what we're going to do is make this about you motherfuckers, about you guys needing to perform to win the fucking test. Now, uh, the, 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 the one day, forgive me. Now, you know what? If I can just look at this from a different way. Now, I don't, I don't know if Pat Cummins has come out and, and explained why he chose to bat f uh, bowl first, but I've got a theory of my own. It's not a tinfoily, but it's just a theory. Mm. 
why – if you go out there and bat first and set a huge total, you give them something to chase. Like you put – almost go, oh, you're underdogs now, and they go out there and perform a miracle. Mm. You, didn't, you don't want to ever put them in that position. To, to give them the opportunity to be like, backs to the wall, let's go out swinging. You're defensive immediately. You're, you set the tempo, bro. Yeah. You set it. You and set the, it. And then you let us know what we got to do. No, 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 you set it. When Rohit went, Rohit Sharma. Heard of him? Heard of him. Uh, things slowed down. That catch from Travis Head, who obviously is absolutely suckable at the moment. Um, but, but listen, made the catch that had to be made. But the catch, dude... It was, was suckable. suckable in the extreme. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like it was it was something that you couldn't help but suck. You couldn't help but suck it. You, if you ever had that feeling, you just see something that's just <laughs> so suckable that you, you that God's be good, you can't be helped. You have to do what you have even to do, even if it means sinning. Even in the eyes of the Lord, if you got to sin. Sometimes it's sometimes it's good to sin every once in a while. Sometimes you gotta suck so bad, even if it means you gotta sin. Sometimes you gotta suck to sin, and sometimes you gotta sin to suck. <laughs> that was Travis said. And in fairness to you and I, we've always said that. Always. <laughs> Check the tapes. Not a day's gone by I haven't said that to my missus. <laughs> Yeah, that may have sounded inappropriate. Yeah, that... But yeah, I got no, carried away. No, I got sorry, carried away. That wasn't what you meant, though. I got carried away. But it wasn't what you meant. No, I meant in a it cricket wasn't sense. In a, it I wasn't in, in, yeah, in a... It wasn't sense. in a... It wasn't in how it sounded, punters and dribblers. No, I meant in a cricket sense. We meant... It's just... I'm so... I'm so we're passionate so about it. We're so up and passionate. We, only, we were talking about in, in cricket-specific <laughs> terms here and nothing else. I can understand, though, how for a moment you may have assumed that there was something more, uh, you know, disrespectful going on. No, and that couldn't be further from that the truth. That couldn't be further from the truth. That's not the game that we play. Uh, so, Pat wins a toss, sends him in. Trav takes one of the more suckable <laughs> catches seen at the World Cup. <laughs> well. <laughs> Off Big Show, no less. Yeah, who also... Has had some suckable moments. He's had suckable up. moments. Fuck yeah. But Travis Head, and I think we'll all agree, now the most suckable man in Australia. Yep. Uh, that's, that well, would, he's that's, the most suckable man in world cricket right yeah, now. Yeah, comfortably. How old is, is Trav now? Like, he's someone that was in and around the international setup generally from one days to test matches. I find, though, test matches is more the one where I'm like, I don't trust you yet. Like if you're, if there's like a family member with a new partner and you're like, listen, we're all cool, but I don't, you haven't like done anything to make me love you. There was a period there where that was Trav, where it was like, well, who is this guy? He's highly touted. And like, but then like the last couple of years, he's just come on so strong where he's given me no choice, but to just suck him. And remember he was dropped for the first test of the ashes. Was it the first? No, test? that was the, that was India. He wasn't dropped in the ashes. When was he dropped? In India. It was in India. In India. And then it was like, what are you doing? No, you're right. Because my memory failed me, puns and jewelers again. I'm a But he got 100 in the World Test Championship final. Yep. He played well in the ashes. He turned up in the ashes. Turned up in the ashes, I believe. Is that correct? I can't even fucking remember, to be honest. Vibe. Then uh, tons up in his first, he's injured, and then tons up in his first test back, and then tons up 130 something in the final. Just absolutely. Gorgeous. Like, there's just... Pat Cummins is bowling as well. Like, I know we're jumping around here now, no, but I feel spell. like we're... Big spell. Just... How many weeks? Three? Two? Three weeks? Two, two weeks? Bowling his dick. I've got fucking Coley, who was looking dange. V-Rat. V-Rat now, you know... The <clears> rat? <throat> the rat. Listen, the rat's good, but yeah... He's only got one World Cup. You won in 2011 when you were a baby girl. Yeah. You know what I mean? You, you, you won a long time ago. You didn't do it like yourself. You're a great cricketer. You're phenomenal. A lot of respect for you, mate. But listen, this was your moment, okay, in front of your people. Skipper. No, not Skipper. Not skipper. Row it, Skipper. Row it, Skipper. That's right. Was Skipper. Was Skipper. Not no Skipper anymore. Skipper. But as a danger man, as a- The greatest ODI player of all time. Yeah, I think 50 like tons in front of your own people, in front of like, have to be one of the biggest crowds of all time, right? And to just 
go to water there after Sharma got out. It was it was it was telling of a side that's not quite sure how to pick ripe fruit. They're not fruit pickers. They seem like a bunch of individual fruit pickers. Like, Listen, I think you should pick fruit this way. I think you should pick fruit this yeah. way. Not a group of collective it, 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 unionized it, fruit pickers. It takes a team to, to pick fruit. Well, they're not unionized. It takes a, it takes a team to, to pick fruit. Put it this way. If you go out onto a cherry farm, Tom, you won't find individual blokes out there picking a couple of fucking cherries here or there. You'll find an orchestrated, organised, highly disciplined, highly organised, highly capable team and, of cherry and, and, pickers. And disciplined and organised. Yep. Did I mention organised and disciplined? I think you did. Cherry pickers getting the job done as one. All rowing in the same direction. That's right. Or pulling in the same direction. Or right. picking in the same direction. That's right. Now, listen, i tell you what else excited me, Eddie. I was loving that they hadn't lost a game or all, all uh, tournament. But you and I picked like a dude. Which enough. we picked, and we've been saying basically uh, since, the, since fucking, what, like 10 games ago. I also loved that Virat got 100 in his previous test match. It was set up. Uh, fucking keep calling well, it test matches. Keep saying that. I keep saying it. Now, we had a long day. Listen. Long day. Long day. I loved that in the previous one day in the previous game, Virat got 100. I was like, he's not going he's not going back to back. It just wasn't going to happen. Now, I wasn't – like, we were confident we were gonna, that we were going to win. Like, this was the best opportunity they haven't lost. But, obviously, the chips stacked heavily against us, right? But you just – sometimes you just know. Sometimes you know. Sometimes your fucking testicles will tell you, ding, 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 fruit's ripe, start picking. You know how – if there's a storm coming, ants are up and about. You know what I mean? They I'd know. Look to, I'm, I've got to be honest, everyone. I didn't know that about ants, and I'm not going to. You know, I'm not a liar because I could have lied there. I could have lied me pants off. Lie, uh, lie, pants off. Another example: people's knees get sore and shit, right? I do Rains know that. That happens to me. Knee gets nice and stiff. Listen, the Australian cricket team knows when there's fucking World Cup fruit to be picked. Uh, just check our hall. Six. Count them. One, two, three. Four, five, six. Have you counted them? Next best? Two? Two, India. Two, West Indies. One, England, which was bullshit, and one, Sri Lanka. Otherwise, the kings of the fucking goddamn world. Are we, we went, the greatest cricketing nation of all time? It's, like, not, even, it's, not, even it's not even close. It's not even close, right? It's like, not you, even close. But I mean, across everything. One day is obviously. But like... It's not close. Ashes. It's not close. It's not close. Test it's not matches close. generally... It's not close. Stark, three weeks? Did Starkey get three? Hazelwood, two. He was fucking good. Glenn Maxwell, one. Paddy C got two. Zamps got one. Marsh and Trav just, you know, just doing their job. Nice, tidy, nice, tidy e-coms. Econ? Economy? Econs? David for fucking Warner now elevates himself to, like, he's right the fuck up there now as, like, one of our all-time fucking players. Yes, well, he's uh, he's close to one of our great. He's close to our greatest one day batsman ever. But two, he, now he's got two word WCs now. It's just, it's just puts you into a different category. Winning yep. two, is this Paddy's second or is Paddy's it? second? So Paddy's got two now. Paddy's as well. got two. There you fucking. Mitch go. Marsh has got two. Steve Smith's got two. Glenn Maxwell has got two. two. Yeah. Travis Head doesn't. Marnus uh, is first. Marnus, is Marnus first. was almost not even picked. It was going to be him or Stoinis. 137 off 120 game over game set match sort of stuff. In the Marnus, fucking... But Marnus goes out, plays a role, 58 off 110. That's, I mean, that's fuckable too. Well, that is... Fu well, that is. Given the circumstances. That's circumstantial suckability, mate. Without a shadow of a doubt. You better believe it. You better fucking believe it. Didn't even get a look in at the tail. It's so fucked, Tom, how good we are at cricket. It's just... It's becoming a problem. Yeah. And... <sighs> Not for us, obviously. It's no. great for us, but for no, everyone it's else. Be, it's, beca it's becoming a problem for the globe because you just sit there and you ask yourself, listen, well, Tobler, you're going to get up, please, my friend. You're going to get up, if, if you don't mind, the actual population of India. And because I love just doing numbers sometimes, punters and dribblers, I'm going to give you some percentages. Can you do Tobler? some numbers for us? So it's one point. Four zero eight billion, and are we at twenty five million? Have we hit twenty five yet? Are we at twenty five? A fishy dish. 
25.69. So 25, 6, 9. 6, 9, eh? <sighs> number. So. Divided by, what was that number, please, Tobler? Uh, 1.408 billion. Okay. That's lot, lot 14 million. That's 100. Um, We have 0. 0.0182 of their population. Is that? Is that accurate? Yeah. Yeah. About 1.8, 1.7% of the population. So, like, statistically speaking, if you're just listening to our numbers guy, assuming he's correct, and I assume because I don't do numbers, we should not ever win against them. We should never win against them. But we fucking win all the time. We are the greatest cricketing nation on planet earth a humble people despite the way we're conducting ourselves a humble cricketing nation of toilers of grafters of men and women who just get out there our women are fucking insane as well we just get out there and we see the ball we hit the ball we bowl the ball we catch the ball we're honest we field the ball we're aggressive we're in your face we'll shake your hand afterwards but while we're out there we'll let you fucking know you're in the fight yeah like you, you want to fuck them, you want to go toe to toe with the with the big dog. Put them up, you know. Oi, stick them up. Oi, put them up. Stick them up. Listen, if you want to go for a schooner and a schnitty afterwards, double gravy, ladle sort of stuff. If you want to come back to mine, kick the feet up. We'll put some nice music on and we'll solve the world's problems. Maybe talk a little space. Maybe talk a little World War Two. Whatever the fucking thing. Whatever floats your boat, yeah. bruh. Yeah. Okay. Maybe we'll drink tequila to the way out of us, okay? Yeah, say some things we'll regret in the morning, but, but we're friends now and we'll apologise for It doesn't matter. We'll we... pretend like that didn't even Listen, happen. exactly right. Exactly right. We'll debate things. Yeah, we'll yell at each other. We'll yell at each other. We won't let each other fucking speak. <laughs> we'll you won't finish at each other. No way. I'll be barking down your throat, <laughs> cunt. But you're loving it. And you're loving it. That's how we play our cricket. We beat the <laughs> fuck out of you on the field. We bring you back home. But no. We shout you down. Yeah, we shout you down. Scream at your bra for not bringing the right opinions, but, but we love it, right? Opinions you can barely get out, mind you. Yeah, well, I won't let you. <laughs> won't let you breathe. Like I won't let you breathe on the field, mate. That's the Australian way. That's no it. breathing. No, no breathing, mate. That's listen, how we play cricket. Listen, less than two percent of your population pounded you in front of your own people. One hundred thirty thousand of them yeah. pound you into the pound earth. You. Like, Thank you. Spanked you. You know what I mean? One of the great spankings of the history of world cricket. Not a big deal. To us, because we know how to pick for it. Listen, well, listen, we've won six of them. So it's like we're proud of the nation, but we're kind of getting used to it. We, you know? We're not getting over it, though. No. We're used to it. We're not getting sick of it. We're not getting sick of it. There's nothing quite like spanking the rest of the world. Yeah. It's good for the soul. You guys wouldn't know that, India. You wouldn't get it. You wouldn't get it. You're not big cricket guys. No. And girls. But we're talking the men here. You are big cricket, but you're just not good cricket. Well, you don't get it. In terms of just in comparison to Australia, like, again, mm. humble Australians here. Mm. Humble. Yep. Humility. No one's more humble than us. No, no, no. But what we're saying is, in a respectful sense, given your population size and given ours, the fact that you don't win mm. and that we do win is somewhat shameful. Well, it's respectfully. It's completely and utterly disgraceful, Tom. If you don't mind, mm. just want to work something out. Okay, here's the math, punters. We're doing drivers. some more math. More math. You know how we've won six World Cups? Yeah. India, by their very population, should have won three hundred. Three hundred World Cups. Three hundred World Cups. Now, can you just explain the working there? I'm just. I'm. How does that work? Because there hasn't been 300 World Cups. They should have won 300. <laughs> if we've won six, they, won, they should have won 300. Okay, so like population. Which means they just should have won them all. <laughs> exactly. You should have never lost That's the World Cup. That's what it Cup. means. And yet you've only won one. Two. Two. <laughs> but like essentially no, it's no, one. What, right? what, I'm, what I'm saying is they should have won all of them. Yeah, you should have won all of them. And but we have we've won all of them essentially, basically we have. How many of the rest of the world won? India's won two. Sri Lanka's won one. Has Pakistan won one? West Indies have won two. England's won two. We've won six. How many have been? Are you, you threw out. You, we need to get it because if we won like as many as the rest of the world, uh, more than 
Oh, maybe it's six six. Is it six six? Maybe it's six all now. Like six for us, six for six the for the rest of the world. If there's been twelve, that's the number. That's the math. That's well. fourteen. Okay. So, so who? So just under. So India. West two. Indies have two. Yep. Okay. Uh, India have two. Pakistan has one. Mm. Sri Lanka has one. England has one. That's seven. Seven then plus six, six is fourteen. We're basically fifty fifty. Yeah. We and will. you remove England, which is a load of shit. So we are fifty fifty. It's someone should have won it that year. No, we no, weren't given. We weren't given. We weren't given two thousand seven. Were we? Two thousand seven. Were we given the fucking two thousand seven NRL premiership? No, we weren't. You're right. It's a great point. We all know that the twenty nineteen World Cup was void. We know it. We do. We know that to be true. It was bullshit. Anyway, let's not get into that. Who gives a fuck about England? England, by the way, Eddie, can I just can I just pull off at fucking drive by on England town? Those weak, lame pieces of shit, respectfully, of course, humble Australians, had the gall, and I think it was Nasser Hussein of Mr. Excuses fame, who was like, Oh, they've had a long fucking schedule, they've had a long season this year. They had the ashes at home. Like, oh, you mean you had the ashes at home where you had to go to bed every fucking night in yeah, your own I'll house? I'll tell you what's worse than that. Going to India, then having the Test Championship, then having the Ashes, which essentially you win, but you retain whatever, and you've already won the Test Championship. Then you go over to a fucking World Cup, and I'm sure there were some dumb one days and teachers. I don't think they've been. I don't think they've been home since Australia. Yeah, it had shocked me. You know, what? Remember, if they've well, been remember, home, it'd be to get a change of undies. Remember, we had a friend of the show, David Warner, in in the studes. Yeah, so I remember David. I be, I, I've got a crazy memory of him saying that he was like, once we go to the Ashes, that's it for fucking... Yeah, like we're gone for like eight months. Well, actually, before that, before was the, the Ashes, cricket, India. Was the, well, they went to India and then they had the Test Championship. Yeah. I think when he was like, we go to India, we don't come back to November. I'm yeah. sure he said yeah. that. Oh, but England are tired. <laughs> Yeah, That's he said it's hard for England because of the timing of World Cups on the back of the Ashes series. There's so much focus on the Ashes that come the end of it, you are mentally exhausted. Pussies. Now, I'm not saying you're not mentally exhausted, but you're just not made of the right stuff because we were mentally exhausted and we still, you know what we did was we fucking banded together like Australians do. Yeah. Waltzing Matilda sort of shit. You Anzac know what I mean? sort of stuff. Anzac sort of stuff. Well, Waltzing like, Matilda yeah, fucking right. underneath the Southern Cross I stand, sprig of waddle in my hand. Yep. We bind together. Once a Jolly Smagman. Sat by a billabong. Under the shade of a coolabar tree. And he sang as he watched and he waited till his billy boiled. You'll come a waltzing Matilda with me. <laughs> waltzing Matilda. Waltzing Matilda You'll come a waltzing Matilda with me And he sang and he watched And he waited till he's Billy Boy You'll come a waltzing Matilda with me that sort of energy. That's the that energy. That wins World Cups, <laughs> That's mother- how it's done, <laughs> motherfucker. You want to know how it's done, motherfuckers? That's that. how it's done. That. Listen, you want the blueprint? There you go. Uh, but guess what? Now you've got it. So what? Yeah, you can't waltz sing Matilda with me. You can't waltz sing Matilda <laughs> with me, bro. Sorry, bro. That's one thing you can't w- do. Uh, excuse me. Oi. Oi. <laughs> Were you once a jolly swagman, mate? Camped by a billabong under the shade of a cool <laughs> bar tree? I don't think so, bro. No, think so. And if you weren't, then I'll tell you one thing for free. You ain't fucking waltzing Matildering with me. You ain't winning jack shit. Jack shit. That's why we drowning in fucking glory over here, bro. Yeah, I'm tripping over fucking trophies. Oi, listen here, cunts. I stubbed me toe on a fucking trophy. Oi, listen day. here, cunts. Listen up. Quick, smart. What's the national sport? Cricket. What do we fucking dominate into the core of the earth? Just went over it. Waltzing Matilda sort of stuff. Cricket. Could you imagine if there was no rugby league? People go, oh, but you you, know, you, you wouldn't have won shit even if there was rugby league. No, bro. We would have dominated like we dominate cricket. If we push, if we put the will and the spirit of the nation into one single pursuit like we do every fucking summer. Yeah. Then we cannot be beat. No. 
It's just simple as that. We also had a terraform Mars fucking years ago, just in terms of the collective power of the nation. You know what I mean? But we chose not to. We you chose know why? To play sport. You know why? Because we love our fucking island home. That's why. That's it. We don't want to go anywhere. No disrespect to Elon. All right. I respect what you're doing from an engineering and a, you know, Science, given, you know, given humanity another home point of view. Even if Dave doesn't appreciate you. Yeah, but like, bruh, listen here. I, got, I put it this way. If he was Australian, there'd be no SpaceX. He'd be going pretty comfy. Yeah, that's it. He'd go, there'd be no need to fucking <laughs> no, go but anywhere. No, he'd go, I'm not interested. He'd go, fuck that. I'm nipping down to the beach. Yeah. I'm going to dip my sack into one of the fucking million beaches. Yeah, sorry, dude. I'm going to go fishing. Yep. I might go and camp by a billabong yep. under, under the, the shade, shade of a, of a coolabar, coolabar tree. tree. I might sing. Sit and watch. <laughs> and wait till me billy boils. Yeah. yeah. You can come a while sing Matilda with me. That would be Elon if you lived in Australia. There'd be no SpaceX. Thank your lucky stars Elon doesn't live here because he wouldn't have done a fucking thing. Correct. And that explains... Why no Australians terraform Mars? Because no one wants to go anywhere. Are we off topic? I don't know anymore. No, we're on topic, Tom. We haven't been off topic ever. Maybe a couple of times. <laughs> but not often. No, not, and not today. Certainly not today. Not, not of all days. No. As we bask in the afterglow of a six-wicket, seven-over humping yeah. of the Indians. Who have, by the way... Disappointed their nation. Yeah. Sorry, I had to say it. You gotta be able to you gotta listen. Obviously, it's like they're they were they're a great team and congratulations to them. They had a great tournament. Yep. Well done. Yep. Great. But the reality is they've let down over a billion people. That's right. And it might sound harsh, it might sound over the top, but if you were to go out and run uh, some sort of quantitative survey. Like man uh, in the survey. street sort of stuff, you and me, person to person. Are you disappointed? Yes or no? Do you feel let down? You'd get a 100% success rate. Yeah. Okay? And let me tell you, partners and jubblers, if Virat Kohli could trade his 50 fucking uh, one-day tons for another cup at home, I reckon he would have done. I think he... I, I, I reckon he would have done. Actually, he probably wouldn't have, and that's why India don't win him. Great point. That's why they don't win. They're not fucking Billabong Take operators. that back. Not, not Billabong, Jolly Swagman. Not Billabong guys. No. Not Billabong guys. We would, though. Fucking oath. Tell you what, Punter would have traded every single international century ever got for WCs. That's a Jolly Swagman. I tell you what Punter would have done. He would have traded every single test on he had just for one more test win. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Stop at nothing. Give me one more. Fuck it. Take me hundreds. I'm a Jolly Swagman. Take me hundreds. I'm a jolly swagman. It's beautiful. Yeah, it's beautiful stuff. But it's simple. Elegant. And now, I don't know... To celebrate. But, but because we haven't had a fucking second to consume any content uh, outside of the, the, the victory... Because, again, to reiterate, our penises have been on belt, belt sanders. Belt sanders all day... Um, like, I don't know whether there's much else. I know that fucking uh, Travis Head is, l by perception, on one of the great tears right now. Seems like that. I think they all are. But seeing a lot of Travis Head imagery where he's just ripping. i tell you what Travis Head's done. And I know they're not the same thing. I understand that the test cricket and one-day cricket are separate to some degree. Well, literally they're different, but yep. But I, but there's a there's crossover in terms of the players and shit. You sure. I can't help but feel like this does something to boost his test match chances of getting the song off. Oh, bro, he gets the song. The problem is, I don't know how old he is. I know you were looking that up before, Travis. He's said. 29. 29. Still in his 20s. But... How old's Mitch Barsh? He's 34. Have a go at that cunt. Look at him, dude. That's living. That's a... That's a... Under the Southern Cross I Stand sort of guy. Yep. Sprig a waddle in my hand. But also, what I've been seeing on, on the old Soch, that's social media for those of you that aren't, uh, you know, initiated like Eddie and I, like almost every cricketer to a man in the goddamn country is sharing in images of him being like, mad cunt, like, good on you, you're a legend. Guys who aren't even playing over there, like, I think he's a, I think he might be also like one of the great 
dudes of all time. That's the vibe I'm getting. Have a go at him, mate. I would love to have a bit of a rip with Trav, I think. He's got the, the, the sunnies. Oh, I'd fucking love to. Those are business time sunglasses yeah, they he's are. got on. Yeah, they are. They're ripping and tearing. That's that's man. that's man of the match stuff right yeah. there. Yeah. Is there... I'd love to have a rip with Trav. Love to. Is, the, is he the greatest Travis we've ever produced as a nation? I like, off the top of my head, I'd say yes immediately, but I'm like, is there a Travis I'm not thinking of? Well, I'm in this context. I'm only prepared to think about Australian Travis. That's the only, of course. Uh, the none, none coming to mind. I don't think there's a greater Travis that we've ever produced. I think he's the number one Travis for sure. Well, he's certainly the number one Travis on this show. Yeah, but if he's the number one Travis on this show, you'd go so far as to say he's potentially the number one Travis in all of the world. Definitely number one Travis Australia's ever produced. I can't think of another Travis. Now, that also is a win by default if we don't have any other Travis as a note. Travis Burns, did you play for the Manly Seagulls? Probably not as good. Listen, if we can't think of great Travises like that, then... We, un we know who the greatest is. It's pretty simple. Yeah. You know what I mean? It'd be like, oh, I don't know any great Donalds. Never, no, not, nah. Any great Donalds? No. Nah. Nah. Any great Shanes? Uh, Rickies? Any great Ians? Rickies? No. Nah. It's not, you, you know what I mean? Are you getting my fucking point now, cunt? If you can't think of a great Travis, there aren't any. Simple well, as that. One. Who? Travis Ed. Well, that's exactly right. I'm talking about outside of him. I'm talking about outside of Travis Head. Yeah. Who also has one of the great last names of all time. Got to, got to be honest, pretty fucked up. They got to go play a couple of T20s in a couple of days. Listen. That might be the most fucked up thing ever. Listen, the scheduling needs to be looked at. How you can go from World Cups to... I want to say something. If you don't mind. Mm. And I know we're jumping around, but I forgot it was there and you pulled it out. Not my dick, by the way, if you just listen. Tom and I... Okay. Off the back of last night, have decided to release... Big Day Rosé Magnums in celebration. Yep. Now. We're going to hold these back. Well, we weren't even going to release them. We thought, you know what? We should. We should. I don't know if you can hear. I mean, there's like an audible thud when this big, thick bitch drops onto the, uh, onto the armchair here. Listen, it would be un-Australian in the fucking extreme. If you didn't buy a big day rosé magnum in celebration of what we've done overnight. Look at this thing. It's basically English willow. It's the size and thickness of any cricket bat this nation's produced. Not lengthwise, but good. That's David Warner thickness. That's David Warner thickness. It's 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 I'm pretty sure uh, to scale Pat Cummins' shaft. That's pretty much a direct replica. What we did is we got a mould off Pat. Thank you for that. Yeah. Uh, and we've knocked up bespoke Big Day Rosé Magnums shaped. What we did, I mean, I think it's probably worth just taking the pun through the moulding process. So we get a polymer uh, and a sort of a gack. Polymer and gack. You remember gack? The thing that would make like, the fart noise when you stick it in the... So what yep. we did was we got that, but it was like it was uh, before it had cured. Yes. We then had to get Pat, shockingly, not even hard. We no. just had to get him out of his, you know, comfort zone, as it were. Yep. You pour in the polymer and the gack around the shaft into a tube. Mm. You let it set for about nine hours. He stands yeah, it's there. About, yeah, it's about nine. It's about nine or ten hours. He sits there and lets it set. Well, stands there, actually. Um, and then once it's set, you then just have to... <laughs> Pull yep. it off. You slide it off. You slide it straight off. Yep. And then we basically just get bottles made in the exact shape. Yeah. I mean, we set it down to our glass manufacturers with the mould. Yeah. Um, and they and they get to work. Mm. Now, you'll notice it's thick. That's... To do with the size of Pat's penis. Basically, they said down there, this thing's so big and, and, uh, and round that you're going to need a thicker glass. Now, if you want to celebrate Australia's sixth World Cup and you want to do so in style... Well, a big day deserves a big day. Big day rosé, magnums available, 6 p.m. this Thursday. Hellosport.shop. Nice, oh, 
This Thursday, 6 p.m., hellosport.shop. Shop. Celebrate the nation. Celebrate World Cup glory. Celebrate spanking the Indians. Celebrate the picking of fruit. Yeah. Celebrate Billabong. Celebrate Coolabar trees. Celebrate Jolly, Swag. Jolly Swagman. Celebrate the great nation of Australia. It's as simple as that. Get and, waltzing Matilda, you know. And do it with the most Australian rosé all time, Big Day Rosé. It's very simple. It's not rocket science. This bottle is so heavy, it's fucking out of control. It's out, it's out of control. Punters and dribblers, this Wednesday, between 5 and 6 p.m., breakingtheyips.com, the final hacker major of 2023. Tickets go on sale. This is for the Bondi Classic. North Bondi Diggers, the golf club up there. Picturesque, nine-hole fucking gem of the city of Sydney, Edward. Fucking unmissable, punters and dribblers. But now, most of you will miss it. Now, and it, it's, that's, that's statistics for you. Like, I mean, you can't fight math, baby. You've got one of the great nine-hole courses of all time in one of the most picturesque places of all time, saddled up next to one of the great clubs, pubs, bars, whatever you want to call Bistros. it. Bistros. of all time. Saddled up with the greatest format of all time, four-man Ambrose, up against the greatest organiser of all time, Sebastian Antoniou. Who's just had his fucking two boys, well by done, the brother. way. Well done, Sebo. Well done, brother. And Millie, congratulations to both of you. Sweet, beautiful little boys. He's a dad now. Well done to Sebo. Congratulations, mate. They also look a fuckload like They you. do. Your genes are strong. And pure. Yeah. What we're saying in a roundabout way is if you want to come and play at the at one of the great tournaments of all time, the Hacker Major, the fifth edition, fourth this year, the last this year, then you're gonna have to be on breaking the Ips, you're gonna have to be on breaking the Ips dot com this Wednesday, the twenty second of November, between the hours of five and six PM Australian Eastern Daylight Time. No, we don't adhere to Brisbane. Sad, soft. Sorry, Queensland. Get it together. Time. No one else does it. It's Australian weird. Eastern Daylight Time between the hours of five and six. Sebo, because he's dastardly, likes to keep the punter and dribbler guessing. He's basically just like, if you really want to fucking come, then you're going to get there and you're going to be. He wants the most ravenous hackers out there to be foaming at the dick to get out there and to come to what is genuinely one of the great days you'll ever have. So, the golf day is the 8th of December at North Bondi Golf Club. The tickets go on sale this Wednesday, 22nd of November, was it, Edward? Yep. Between the hours of 5 and 6 p.m., breakingtheyips.com. Seb's a dad now, two kids, fucking everything's happening, everyone's up and about. Do you want to miss this one? Do ya? Some fucking cracking sponsors on board. Shout out to everyone who's helping out. Fucking... Southern Comfort, Better Beer, Big Day Rosé. It's just one of the great days. Fucking unmissable. Get a ticket or forever or be don't. a loser. Or don't. And go forever fuck yourself. be a loser. It's fine. Go fuck yourself. That's whatever. Whatever, go fuck yourself. Be a loser. Yeah, go yeah, yeah, fuck yourself. <laughs> All right, Eddie. Now, I want to talk about a bit of biffing here. Um, and we're doing it thanks to our friends at KO, but... This Wednesday night, the Butch, Nikita Zoo, the Butcher, friend of the show. Scary cat. Fucking eats snake hearts. Fucking, you know, what is it? Cobra fucking hearts. Cobra hearts, fame. This Wednesday at Newcastle Entertainment Centre, the Newcastle Centre of Excellence, if you don't mind. Um, the you Shed of Excellence. The Shed of Excellence. Um, Nikita, the Butch, takes on Bill and Dylan Biggs for the, uh, what is it, the what weight class is it? Uh, welterweight the Australian title. Super Welterweight title. Now, Dylan Biggs is a fucking, he's Biggs. He's no one to fuck with. He's had as many knockouts as Nikita's had fucking fights. He's this, a beast. This is a serious biff. Ten rounds. Battle of the knockout ass, mate. I think this is Nikita's longest fight at ten rounds, Tobler. Is that correct? He hasn't fought ten rounds. No way. This is one of those ones where it's like <laughs> Nikita's the one everyone knows about. No disrespect to Bigsy, right? But, like, Nikita's got the last name and he's been good. But this is like... This is like what's happening here. Where are you, Nikita? Where are you at? Yeah, but like, what it is, though, Tom, is... 
like, this is what happens. You, you get tested. You get tested. You either pass the test. Basically, on your way to glory, you got to go through test after test after test after test after test. And if you're not up to it, you fuck off and you basically, you know, you're condemned to a certain level. Which is a problem with boxing. It sometimes just seems to be the way. If you lose, then you're like... Think about fucking Brock Jarvis, who was fighting with Matchroom. Eddie Hearn got fucking sparked by Liam Pyro round one, and then it was just like, unfortunately, now, unfortunately for him, it was it was it wasn't a great. The nature of the, the loss. Na- it was, was it was tough. Either way, what I'm saying here about this fight is, is there's a lot on the line. Fucking out there is not just the the title, basically the super Australian super welterweight title. Not just that, but like glory and all the shit that comes with a win and with a loss. Both undefeated, Tommy Tobler? Yeah, correct. This is one to watch. Now, tell you what I'm pumped for, Tom. Yeah. To to wrap up what we're doing on Wednesday, have a couple with me old mate and some others, mm. and then watch this fight. Yeah. That's what we're doing. That's what we're Wednesday doing. Wednesday night, we're watching yeah, this fight. We're going to go fight. and watch this fucking one th- fight. No, no, no. It's not even, there's no debate. There's zero debate. We are watching the fuck out of now, this. Now, we would have been watching it anyway if we were doing it from our own homesteads. But because your dad's here, are just hard at work, belt sand and sanding dicks, as it were, we will spend the evening together enjoying violence. Yep. Winding down. Winding but down. But actually winding up. With some violence. Now, obviously there's tickets still remaining. You can get them at Ticket Tech. But this is a pay-per-view now, it's available on main event via KO. Got some good news for you. Even if you don't have KO, which you should, you can still get the fight in front of the paywall. You don't have to have a KO subscription to purchase the fight through KO. That's right. Now, some of you won't be big Australian cricket, like Australian cricket fans, which means you wouldn't have KO, which is disappointing, but there are some of you out there. If you want to watch this fight, which you fucking should, because Wednesday night, in my opinion, is one of the great nights for Biff's all time. It is. Then buy the fight in front of the paywall. You just pay up front, and it's a piece of piss. That KO have made it fucking easy. Yeah, they Can are. I also say something, Tom? Gone are the days, and they weren't that long ago, and we shouldn't forget where you couldn't even watch this unless you had a Foxtel fucking set-top set box. Set-top box. KO have gone, you know what? We're going to put Biff's... Not just UFC, but boxing on our main event via KO channels. It's it's so easy now. People punching people. And i got to tell you, if you buy this fight on Wednesday, you are going to be treated to a great night of Australian boxing, which is always entertaining. I'll tell you what. I've watched basically every single one of Nikita's fights, and I have not seen a yawn fest. No, ever. We've, I think we've, Genuinely ever. I've watched all of them since I knew who he was. Yeah. Probably the last couple of years. I reckon I've gone close to seeing all seven. To be completely Anne Frank with you. I'm not sure, se- but se- I well, think... If we were there at his debut, which I think we might have, I've seen all of them. I think I've seen all of them. And the butch knows how to butch. Dilly Biggs of champion fame, I don't know what he's got. But I mean, he's fucking undefeated. I'm hearing good things, out. though. I'm yeah. hearing good things. A lot, of people, people a lot of people thinking he should be favourite. Again, like if you're not like me and Eddie, who are going to be winding down from a belt sanding of note, who are going out to watch it, like if you're sitting at home midweek... And you're like, what the fuck am I going to do tonight? There's no more cricket on. There's nothing really sports-wise on that I can think of off the top of my dome until like Big Bash and Test start. Get it together. What this is? This is good, honest aggression. Get it together. The Butch puts on shows, bro. Like his fights are fucking entertaining because he goes out there and he punches on. He really thr- like he's he's prepared to wear him. And that's where I'm like, this one is very, like, this one is like a, I don't know how this will go because the Butch is not afraid of getting hit, but he's been rocked in a couple of times. His last fight, he was fucking rocked. Now, it was a head clash, but he got rocked with some serious punches post-head clash, but he didn't go down. He looked fucked, but he managed to wrestle back momentum. Then he fought Jeff Horn's brother previously, he that was, was almost, a, that, that was, was a stink. That was a that was that a stink. was a stink. And he got rocked senseless. That late was now. mad. I frothed that fight. It was a good fight. The butch knows how to butch. 
Big fan of the board. Yeah. So show your support. Buy the fight on KO Wednesday night. Make smart rugby league decisions. Buy the fight. You will not regret it. Now, Eddie, we've been going for a long time today. It's been a long day. It's been a grueling day. It's been an arduous day. I need to mention or we need we need to discuss one thing, and that is the uh, overthrowing of an oppressive regime. And that being of Hamish McLennan of hadn't heard his voice till this morning fame. Of shocked me to my core fame. Of just a little bit more than a touch of the John Eels is about him. Shocked me. Like, absolutely rocked me to my very foundation. It was a John Eels, but John Eels was almost... It was a John Eels with something else because John Eels is a bit like... It was... It John was, Eels is about line outs and doing your best and making your tackles. <laughs> and then... Hamish McLennan was a bit more. There was something. It was John Eels without the without the silverware. Yeah, it was John Eels without the fucking without the trophy cabinet <laughs> and the nude photo that does the rounds every couple of, couple of years of John Eels in the shower. That's what it was. Hamish McLennan ousted, gone, done. See you later. Kicked out, ousted, kicked out, done. Now, see ya. Now I want to just say something, Tom. Do you reckon he didn't? He didn't. Wasn't asked this uh, this question like outright today by Benny Fordham in his interview this morning. Fuck, that's good, Rose. Yeah, Sorry, is. carry on. Uh, but he said last week that he didn't regret the signing of Eddie Jones. T- to be fair, he may have been asked that by Benny because we turned it off before he finished. I think. Great point. But let's assume he wasn't. I'd I'd be very interested to know, Hamish, if you regret it now. Yeah, like after you've been sacked, do you've you been regret sacked. it now? So like, okay, so would you still hire the coach that, that fucking you signed on a five-year deal? I know there was get-out clauses, but you signed him for five years and now he's gone after a year and he's left a huge hole to fucking fill and you fucked off Rennie, who had a way bit of winning, winning record and you've got people like Mark... Now Wanganitawase talking to the Roosters and people pissed off that you paid fucking huge money for Sua Ali'i. I'm not bringing Hindu into it. I'm just pointing out things. And now you've got a fucking CEO who says we're not signing any more leagues, which is what you need if you're going to win in 2027, which yeah. should be the fucking point. Yeah, it should be Operation Leaguey signing. It should be Operation How Do We Win Bill Again. Like Black Friday sales, but it's like we're going to go on Black Friday purchase every single NRL. It, feel, it just feels to me like rugby is a little bit like Operation Let's Beat Georgia right now. Yeah. And it should be Operation Let's Win the Fucking World yeah, Cup. Not Operation that, Let's Beat Portugal. And that involves Leaguey's. Asked on 2GB Radio on Monday if his ousting was due to a power grab by some of the states McLennan said in my opinion yes they would have a great they want to have a greater say this is all about money and control at the end of the day so we'll see how it plays out there's been a coordinated campaign to sort of smear me and that's been fed back through me and other board members that's a complete cheap shot I mean listen I'm do- I'm not super au fait with the smear campaign but if the smear campaign is that you signed Eddie Jones, who was a fucking lemon, then you've come out and been like, I don't regret it. And you also made that milk fucking scenario seem way worse than it was. And we fucking sucked at the World Cup. Like, what's been the smear that's been, like, inappropriate? I'm happy if you just say there's a smear campaign, because if there is one, no one likes to be smeared, right? I'm happy to just stand here and say that I wouldn't like to be smeared. Unless you're getting... Peanut butter smeared on you. Listen, unless it's a bit of a Joel Monaghan without the dog, yep. smearing not on. If it's a Joel Monaghan out the dog, without the dog, yep. without the dog, smear and play on. Yep. Dog-based smearings? No. Not play on, but a, a bit of smearing of Monaghan-esque properties sans canine. <laughs> yeah. Replace the canine with a homo sapien yeah, of yeah. your choice. Of your choice. Of your proclivity, tongues optional, but, yep. but, but advised. But homo sapiens. Homo sapiens. We can't be having anything. Leave non- your dogs at the door. Leave your dogs at the door. Leave any beast out of it. That's right. No bestiality on this podcast will be supported. All we're doing is that we're, is we're suggesting to the punter and the dribbler that we're pro smearing under the right conditions. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> so, 
So what we are saying is smearing right conditions play on. If if <laughs> if, if Hamish McLennan here purports to be smeared <laughs> under conditions that, that, are, no not, that are no fair with the traditions that we hold true. Yes. Then I'm fucking on his side. Yep. But I'm yet to see anything. Well, he hasn't given me any examples. Listen, I'm not seeing a smear that would rattle me at this point. Like, if they said, not me, not you, not I, if they had said, someone trying to smear him, that Hamish McLennan likes to smear peanut butter on his balls and get his Alsatian to nibble it off. Yeah. Smear, dude. Yes, yeah. yeah. That's a smear. Yeah, yeah. If he if he's given the Joel Monaghan treatment without the act, if he hasn't even done it, and they're accusing you know his little fucking Shih Tzu of yeah. fucking licking yeah. peanut butter off his nuts, that's right. That's a smear, dude. Well, I'm first in line to acknowledge one. Picks or it didn't happen. I'm I'm first in line to acknowledge that the man's been smeared, but at this point, punters are, and smeared under the wrong conditions. Under the wrong conditions. Mm. What I heard this morning is a man who's been smearing himself with the funds, you know, of his position, taking decadent holidays overseas and not delivering results. You can go on six-week gallivants overseas, stay in ritzy hotels, five first cars, allegedly, if you're if you're performing, mm. if you're delivering. Yeah. Listen but if you're you. doing fuck all except beat Portugal, Georgia and higher losers that dog the nation, show their true colours as the traitors they are and then say you don't regret it, then I'm sorry, mate. Hold on a second. I'm philosophical. It doesn't matter, he said. No one died at the end of the day and it's just a game at the end of the day. An important one and one that I love. But there's a war going on in Ukraine. There's a war between Israel and Hamas. And that's real stuff. That really matters. Well, that's a really nice way to end it. You know what else, dude? Like, fucking, sorry, like, doesn't really matter. Like, AIDS exists. Cancer's a thing. Dude, you know what? At least I didn't stub my toe. You know what? I heard this story once of a guy that fell out of a tree and he caught his scrotum on a nail on the way down. It ripped the whole thing off. Like, that didn't happen. You know what I mean? Well, it doesn't matter. Well, I'm saying it doesn't matter. Like, it could have been worse. I could have left my scrotum on a fucking tree branch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know sure. what I mean? Yeah, no. I, yeah. I'm trying to follow. <laughs> I'm just saying, dude. Israel, Hamas. I'm doing my best. I'm saying bad things happen to good people. Yeah. 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 There's a there's a good man out there who's, who's left his <laughs> straight him on a tree. Is that what you say? Tree. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. I just feel like, you know Show me a good man, I'll show you a straight him on a tree. <laughs> is that is that sort of it? You, now you're getting it. <laughs> what I'm saying is or a flap. Well, it's it's no. Does a scrotum cease to be a scrotum when it's just dangling on a tree branch? <laughs> I think it was it, it was a scrotum. Yeah, it's not. It's no longer a scrotum. No. Well, the remnants of. I almost spat my fucking big day rose there. Listen, I think he makes good points. There are more important things in the world. We're not asking for. Uh, you know him to be locked up, put in jail. But of course, there's more important things in the world. But that's like a get out. Clause, no, no, right? no. But if you fucked up and something goes wrong, you can, a la the scrotum story, punters and dribblers, you can pass anything off as a well. It could be worse. Yes. I could have left my nuts on a tree. Where does it end? Where does it end? Where it could it end? be worse. I could fucking lose a nail. Where does it end? If you go down that train of thought, listen. At the end of the day, mate, you did a bad job. There was a lot of uh, thinly veiled threats today that I picked up, and this is just my opinion. Felt threaty. My opinion. That basically he was like, they offered me to stay on as the director, and I told him no, and he basically implied that they're not going to have access to his... Uh, Sales and nows. Network of yeah. potential sponsors. That's how I... They were like, oh, is Cadbury still going to be on? And he's like, don't oh, so. I don't know. I don't know. They're good people at Cadbury. I don't know what they're going to do. It's like, sounds like you're best buds with someone from Cadbury. Mm -hmm. Sounds like big Cadbury's. Now, listen. 
you bring it on Cabri, good for you. You know, you're fucking doing... You, he's obviously not a complete fucking dead shit. Well, he got the job. so he's, He got he, the job. He has something, but... He obviously knows how to fucking long lunch. I just... Well... He's obviously got... He got, he's got a bit of long lunch now. He so. does have a bit of long lunch about him. I'd lunch with him. I'd lunch with him. I wouldn't... I'd like to go to, to Wong's with him to see how he operates. Yeah. Put see him what, through his paces. See what makes the man tick. Because if you get the chairman job of the Wallabies, you know how to fucking long lunch. Yeah, you can pound some red wine and the rest. Because... You don't get the job otherwise. No. But he makes some really good points. Hamish McLennan. No one's making light On of Ukraine, bike. Russia, Israel, Hamas. I feel like not necessary to bring that up in this context. That seems a little bit fucking cheap. You got fired by poor performance. But it's all good. Could be worse. I um this this might be one of the most succinct podcasts we've ever done, and I mean that. No, no, we've I think we've ascended today, punters and jibblers. I think we've ascended. We've evolved. We've evolved, like from Pikachu to Rakachu or whatever. Yep. You know what I mean? Yep. I don't. Wasn't a big Pokemon guy, but I get it. I know they could evolve. You know that. I, I know they it, could evolve. I think at a certain point they stopped evolving, but we haven't yet. Because no, today was the most succinct podcast we've ever done. Yeah. Like, you want you want fucking, you know, fully evolved, actualized, not fully evolved, partially evolved podcasting wizards. Mm. That's kind of what you got today, I think. Yep. You got best in class. You got magic. Yep. Shout out the punish, shout out the dribbler. Big day rose magnums in support of the nation, in support of the World Cup heroics on sale, hallesport.shop, 6 p.m. this Thursday. If you love the nation, if you love World Cups, if you're a big fan of the sixth, get the Magnum. Other housekeeping matters of note. Uh, Tom and I literally got our dicks on the belt, Santa, so just think of your mates out there fucking yeah. trucking Spare nothing. a thought for us for a moment. You know, all the fucking... Spare, and spare a thought for, for Tobler, yes. who, who's just a great Australian. He's a great Australian... And who... And a great producer. A great producer. And a who gr- is also Australian. And a great friend. A great friend. And someone whose dick was sanded off long ago. Yeah, but continues to turn up. He's been sanding that nub now yeah. for months. Yeah. Got to keep it smooth. And there's been... And listen, there's just... There's a couple of... There's just... There's been a couple of moments in the last <laughs> week where I've just... I've heard something in his voice and yeah, I thought, you know what? Going to let him know he's special. Yeah. Let Tobler know there's been a bit of, there's been some duress. Nothing. Nothing crazy. Listen, not Ukraine, not fucking. Yeah, but he wouldn't make that comparison. Of course he wouldn't. He's not that sort of he's guy. He's not that sort of a guy. He's not a, he's not a, you know, misdirection guy. He wouldn't do it you and fucking take your wallet. <laughs> <laughs> wouldn't put it past me. No, I wouldn't put it past no, you, but I think you're better than that. I think you're better than that. But Tobler's working his ass off. He might put a, he might put a, a dud in. A digit and you do it, but no watch stuff. No, no we'd just be that'd be like a keep generous watch. gift. Yeah. Anyway, shout out to Tobler. Shout out to everyone else. Big Day Rose, Hallisport.shop. Magnums. Magna Fake. Magna Fake. Magna Fake Magnums. Big old fucking thickies. Molded off Pat Cummins' penis, allegedly. Um That's it, right? I think that's it. Gotta go. Gotta go. Out of puff. Au revoir. Could you two just not talk anymore?